Quebec faces pressure to revise its strict family reunification policy as federal and provincial immigration policies clash. Quebec's limited family reunion policy, which has resulted in a backlog of 30,000 families, is discussed by newly appointed Immigration Minister Mark Miller. Miller emphasizes Canada's need for more immigration owing to a lack of labor, but Quebec wants more sovereignty over immigration. Given their divergent stances on immigration numbers, the federal government and Quebec need to have important conversations about family reunification. Recent federal initiatives aim to strengthen family reunification, offering faster processing times, open work permits, and extensions, while Quebec's immigration plan remains restricted. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's proposed rise in the visa price has alarmed people around the world, especially Indian students. International students and workers may face financial difficulties as a result of the 5 to 7 percent fee increase across all visa categories as well as the already high immigration health surcharge IHS. Businesses having sponsor licenses must pay significant fees as well. Indian students would be impacted by the upcoming changes because fees have increased by 15 percent, particularly for settlement, settlement certificates, and student visas. The equivalent status of priority service applications and student visas, together with increased IHS fees, raises the overall cost of visas. Recent rule revisions have a greater impact on post-study employment options and family dependents. The Aleppo model is a comprehensive strategy that Turkey will implement to combat irregular migration and return Syrian refugees. The plan calls for cooperation between the Interior Ministry, the ruling party and Turkey, and a trilateral structure. The strategy intends to address refugee and migration issues while concentrating on Aleppo's reconstruction. Over 3.7 million Syrian refugees currently live in Turkey. Construction of infrastructure and fully furnished homes is being done in collaboration with Qatar. Turkey is also attempting to stop irregular migration by enforcing strict laws against unlawful employment and scrutinizing visa extensions. Following a news hub investigation that exposed migrant exploitation and poor living conditions, an immigration lawyer has criticized New Zealand's accredited employer work visa AWV, program. Lawyer Alistair McClymont ascribes the problems to policy weaknesses that provided chances for exploitation. Immigration Minister Andrew Little defended the program, saying that more complaints show that people are aware of it and have easy access to reporting resources. However, McClymont asserts that employers' self-declarations are unsubstantiated and calls for a comprehensive revision of the law. Immigration New Zealand is prioritizing migrant care while looking into incidents of potential fraud and exploitation. By the end of September, as opposed to the originally anticipated month, Indonesia will introduce its new multi-entry visa policy, which offers a 10-year validity. Sandiaga Yuno, the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economies, wants to make sure that travelers who want to stay in the nation longer find the golden visa offer to be alluring. This initiative came when a second home visa program was introduced in 2022, which enabled foreigners to apply for a stay permit of up to 10 years by satisfying certain financial requirements. The program's prerequisites will be improved as a result of the postponed debut to attract more visitors. The U-Visa program, which was created to support law enforcement efforts and assist immigrant victims of heinous crimes, is drawing flack for having lengthy processing times. Many applicants have been in immigration limbo and unable to work legally during the two to seven years they have been waiting. The U-Visa was designed to protect victims of crime while encouraging reporting of crimes and working with law enforcement. However, a lack of uniform standards for cooperation and a backlog of more than 300,000 open applications have left applicants in a prolonged state of limbo. Reforms are demanded in order to clear the backlog and provide work permits on schedule. Hong Kong residents can now pay £500 to the UK for a five-day turnaround on the accelerated processing of British national, overseas, visas. The action exemplifies the UK's dedication to Hong Kong residents. Following five years in the UK, holders of BNO passports and their dependents may apply for permanent residency under the BNO immigration route, which was developed in reaction to Beijing's imposition of the national security law. After an additional year, it is followed by British citizenship. BNO visas have been granted to 144,500 Hong Kong residents since its introduction. The program was broadened to cover younger Hong Kong residents whose parents held BNO passports. According to recent studies, 
The number of international students from Latin American and African nations who want to study in the U.S. is declining. Students are seeing increased refusal rates while fulfilling standards and being accepted into programs, thus, raising questions about discrimination. The visa restrictions have an impact on the diversity and opportunities available at U.S. colleges, as well as possible changes in students' preferred study locations. As a result, it has an impact on the cultural and economic contributions made by international students. The disparity in visa approvals puts the American dream of higher education accessibility in jeopardy and sparks discussions about what it means for the international standing of the U.S. educational system. In the two years since it was introduced, the Global Talent Visa for the UK has only had three applications, despite being intended to draw extraordinary talent in education, the arts, culture and technology. Foreign professionals holding this visa are able to work in the UK for five years without a sponsor or employer. Despite the good intentions of the programme, concerns have been expressed regarding its ability to draw in top talent due to the low applicant numbers. The procedure requires applying for the Global Talent Visa, which costs £608 per individual, and getting an endorsement from an organization that specializes in the particular field. The application process for the new family reunification parole programs launched by the Biden administration to reunite families split up by immigration procedures is being simplified. Although these adjustments reflect a renewed commitment, the programs fail to take into account those who have been granted immigration visas but are residing in the country illegally. By granting parole in place, the process of issuing waivers that these candidates need to move forward with getting green cards could be sped up. By addressing this problem, the programs may be able to offer more assistance to families negotiating complicated immigration procedures and offer a more complete answer to the visa limbo. The IT Talent Strategies Fast Track Work Permit Program in Canada, which was created to entice highly qualified foreign IT professionals from the US, received all 10,000 of its applications within 48 hours of its debut. To address the lack of skilled workers in the tech industry, employers are now asking for the expansion of this program. The program's success demonstrates Canada's appeal to foreign skilled workers by providing an immigration process that is quicker and more effective than the U.S. Express Entry and H-1B visa programs. The action supports Canada's ongoing initiatives to grow its tech sector and recruit top talent from throughout the world. The expansion of the Refugee Family Support Category, RFSC, to include Afghan refugees has been announced by Immigration New Zealand. This will enable them to get back together with their immediate family. The RFSC, which enables refugees to sponsor family members for residence, is being expanded due to the similar backgrounds and resettlement challenges faced by Afghan evacuees. After making the required technical adjustments, the change is anticipated to be put into effect by the end of September. While the move aims to support successful resettlement, the high demand for RFSC places remains a challenge, prioritizing those without family in New Zealand.